to go figure skating. I once brought my kids to the ice rink and I paid good money to see them fall flat on their face. And I said to myself, gee, I could save some money by simply learning how to ice skate myself and teaching my kids how to ice skate. Well, after a while, I began to like it more than them. <laughs> and then I began to realize that there is sheer beauty and elegance of Newtonian physics here. And I feel the power of Newton's laws of motion. It's beautiful, elegant, and it's very elemental. And I began to realize that, yes, just like physics is based on symmetry, it's based on symmetry of mathematics. Ice skating is based on the elegance of Newton's three laws of motion. In nature, we often see a left hand and a right hand that work in synchronization. We know that the left hand and the right hand are coordinated by the brain and they can work in concert. In terms of the universe, we have the world of the very small and the world of the very big. The world of the very small is called the quantum theory, the theory of electrons, neutrons, and protons. But we also have the theory of the very big, the theory of relativity, the theory of Einstein, the theory of big bangs and black holes and curved space-time. The problem is, and this is the fundamental problem in all of physics, the left hand and the right hand don't coordinate. They don't like each other. They're based on different physical principles. They're based on different mathematics. They're not compatible. Think of taking an aardvark, a whale, and a platypus, and scotch tape them together with tape, and declare that to be nature's most elegant product of evolution. Well, you would laugh. This contraption, this animal glued together with scotch tape, can barely walk. Well, that's the standard model, the quantum theory. It is one of the ugliest theories known to science. No one can believe that this is the final theory. Then comes string theory. The history of science is often the history of paradigm shifts. The world before Copernicus was the world of magic. It was the world of superstition and demons. It was the world of, quote, common sense. Common sense said that the sun rises and it goes around the earth. Copernicus was an old, dying man when he wrote down his greatest work challenging the orthodoxy of the church. Copernicus was no fool. He knew that if he had published his work about the fact that the earth goes around the sun, he'd be tortured. Copernicus realized that he was proposing a paradigm shift for the ages. It turns out that these paradigm shifts only take place once every few decades to centuries, but we're now witnessing a new paradigm shift. The world we see around us, the world we can touch, the three-dimensional world of atoms and molecules is now being replaced by a world where we have vibrating strings moving in ten-dimensional hyperspace. That's a paradigm shift beyond all paradigm. We're now shifting away from simply looking at the Earth going around the Sun to a universe where we're now literally leaving the universe of the Sun and the Earth altogether and going into hyperspace.